Welcome back, this is Dredius with the first episode uh, on Madden 23. And to be honest, I've been waiting for this moment since pre-ordering the game. Um, I was on vacation until two days ago, which is why uh, getting one of the uh, earlier release versions didn't really make much sense. But here we are, it's the 19th of August, and I'm super excited to start my first franchise mode in Madden 23. I'm going to take you along the journey so that you can see everything that is happening here. Uh, I'm going to go to edit rosters, and then going to go to update rosters, just so that you can see that I'm using the current rosters that are available in the game at the moment. We'll be taking you along now through the creation of this franchise. We're starting out here, the new league. We have the options again in online and in offline. I'm going to use the preseason roster with the 75 man roster. We will be cutting players. And here we are at the team selection screen. I, of course, have a team in mind. And looking at the thumbnail, I'm sure that you do as well which uh, that you that you know which team i'm talking about um but uh, let me just talk you through the process of getting there because looking at the, the overalls looking at the teams there are a few obvious choices if you want to put it that way for instance the seattle seahawks are an obvious choice with their current situation at qb and and overall the the overalls are low 70 70 um across the board uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers are also one of those teams that is, of course, a choice uh, that just makes sense with the uh, rookie QB, Kenny Pickett there. The Houston Texans are a team that, of course, is going to be picked quite a lot uh, for rebuilds and franchise modes because it is one of the lowest ranked teams in uh, in the league at the moment, or in, in Madden, if you want to be precise. Tennessee Titans also have the situation at QB. The Minnesota Vikings would also be a team that makes sense. But I opted to go for another team that isn't as uh, as glaring because sometimes uh, some teams you will just see uh, chosen by a lot of uh, creators. Uh, looking at the Chicago Bears and teams that have low overalls are going to be the, the main choices here. Um, but I do think that there are more teams that need a rebuild in comparison to the ones that you can make out quite easily here. And so taking a look at all of these teams here, um, one of the teams uh, like the Philadelphia Eagles that has high overalls. I do think I will be making a franchise series with them as well. The Falcons are looking intriguing. You will see a lot of Giants rebuilds, of course, because because of the low overalls right there. Um, the Lions are, are a choice uh, that just makes sense for many players. The Carolina Panthers with their QB situation and so on and so forth. I will be going for the Miami Dolphins now. The Miami Dolphins have an overall of 80, uh, overall 81 offense, 80 defense. But uh, as always, the cream is in the pudding and we will be taking a look at the details here. And then you will understand why this team is my choice for the first franchise series in Madden 23. Of course, Mike McDaniel will not be the head coach. There's only one coach that is capable of taking over this team, and that will be none other than Coach Dredius. All right, here we are at the main menu screen. Uh, not much has changed in comparison to previous Madden versions, which is a bonus in my opinion, because you don't have to be, uh, you're not over overwhelmed with uh, whatever is going on here. You've still got the news uh, section right here. Uh, you've got the league information with the schedule, with the stats and awards, the history and all that. Uh, you've got the options back here, so that, uh, that just makes sense. Um, on the home screen has been uh, remodeled a little bit, um, has been cleared up a little bit, decluttered. I really like the look with the logo in the bottom left corner. That is just beautiful. And uh, first things first, we're going to take a look at the team, of course, because I do want to make you understand why I went for this team and uh, what the motivation was to go for them. 
we're going to take a look at them in the roster screen. Um, and while we're looking at the roster, you might say, well, this team is not going to be a challenge because they've got Tyree Kill, they've got Teron Armstead, they've got Zayvon Howard, they've got Byron Jones, Mike Isicki, and so on and so forth. Shailen Waddle, so many good players in the team. So where is the challenge? But as always, the, the details are what matters. We're going to look at the quarterback situation and we have... Tua Tagovailoa here, you can see a new addition, the player tag is a quarterback of the future. Tua Tagovailoa, we know him very well. We used him in our uh, Los Angeles Rams uh, franchise series in Madden 22. That was great fun. And uh, yeah, I really like the player. I'm happy to be reunited with him. Uh, he, he did really well, but in the end, he just lacked uh, the 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 ability to really push us over the line. I hope that we get uh, a chance to really play with him more here, to really develop him further and really bring out the best in him. He is undeniable the starting QB with the star death trait. Um, and at age 24, he's young enough and that left hand really is quite slick actually. Teddy Bridgewater is the backup QB. He's a bridge quarterback, uh, which is funny because he's called Bridgewater, so there you go. That's my humor. He's actually ranked above Tua Tagovailoa, which is a bit weird, but uh, taking a look at the fact that uh, Tua was injured quite a lot last season, do you think that makes sense? And finally, we've got Skylar Thompson actually with a real face, which is quite cool. Um, he's a rookie from the 2022 draft, of course, no in-game face. Uh, yeah, he's he's 57 overall. He's my backup QB. Uh, nothing more than that. We will be developing him, of course, because that's just what we do. Um, and in real life, he did quite well in uh, in the uh, training camps and in the first uh, week matchup against the Buccaneers. But uh, to be honest, at 25 with a 57 overall normal death trait, he's basically unusable. So we'll just have to keep that in mind. At halfback, we have quite a few good players. We've got Chase Edmonds as the uh, highest rated halfback, 26 years old, normal death trait, uh, the running back out of Fordham. I really like those gloves looking pretty cool with the orange and uh, the turquoise. Uh, yeah, he's a good, he's a good running back. Uh, not too bad, good starter. Uh, we've got Raheem Mostert, he's a bridge player. He's 30 years old, 78 overall. We've got Sony Michel, who we know from the um, from the LA Rams, and uh, pretty happy to be reunited with him because I do think he's a very good running back. Um, we always have to see how he plays in the game because that is sometimes a little bit of a, of a challenging um, situation when comparing the game to the to real life. Then we've got Miles Gaskin. Um, he has a trade target, young tag, which means he's quite young, which means he would be a, a viable trade target. Uh, he does have strengths in there, of course, but we will need to develop him further. Um, and at age 25, I do think that he has some way to develop. Salvan Ahmed is there, 96 overall, 23 years old, and Gerrit Dokes, 62 overall, 24 years. So basically, and here's where the first details start happening. We've got a starting halfback who's 79 rated, 26 years old. We will be using him, of course. Then we've got Sony Michel, then we've got Miles Gaskin, and then we've got Raheem Mostert, who's 30 years old, 78 overall, and he will be regressing quite quickly. We will be using him. I mean, that just makes sense. Um, I also will think about him uh, being my starter, but uh, these are the first players where you can really identify that those overalls may be a little bit misleading uh, on the overview. We've got two fullbacks. We've got Alec Ingold, who is a very serviceable uh, fullback, 26 years old. The Wisconsin player with a star dev trait, number four ranked fullback in the league. So I'm quite happy with him. We're going to leave him as is. Behind him, we've got Satan Carter, who transferred to, uh, to the Miami Dolphins from the Bengals. Uh, I, I knew that I saw the name elsewhere. 69 overall, we won't be uh, using him too much. He does have uh, quite good attributes in terms of speed and uh, also in terms of acceleration, but everything else is 
very, very lacking. We just have to be aware of that. Fullbacks have pretty bad depth overall uh, in, in terms of Madden because Seaton Carter is the number nine ranked at a 69 overall. So that is actually terrible. The wide receiver core is what is definitely pushing the overalls up uh, into, into uh, maybe unrealistic territory. We've got Tyreek Hill recently moved here from the Kansas City Chiefs. Of course, he's wide receiver one. He's a fantastic wide receiver. Um, he's not the not the uh, largest player to build the wide receiving core around at 5'9", but he's just, yeah, he's just so good. He's a superstar X Factor. So uh, you can be sure that uh, we will be using him a lot. Um, he does have the rack em up uh, trait, which means that they fight for every possible yard. After making a catch, all we need to do is get him 20 plus yard receptions and that will help them. Of course, uh, then we've got the outside numbers uh, 10 yards from the line of scrimmage, which means he's a short out elite, and then the grab and go, which means after he has uh, a narrow C catch, a ball carries with this ability, it can quickly shift momentum, change direction, which means he's just very fl uh, flexible and, uh, and, and agile, which is, of course, a bonus for a wide receiver, but he's 28, and in Madden logic, this will mean that he will be going down in overall pretty soon. Uh, we've got uh, one or two good years, I reckon, but uh, We'll see what happens. He does have quite the hefty contract uh, when looking at that. Uh, that is still down here. Looking at that, he does have a very hefty price tag. Uh, you can also see the motivations, which is new. The overall interest is yellow, close to home. Yeah, we're just about hitting that Super Bowl chase. And then the team has a franchise QB, which we do not have yet. We have Tua, who is going to be my franchise QB, but uh, will it be the, our, our quarterback carrying us into the future? Who knows? Uh, yeah, so that's that. Cheap this year, next year, the full impact will be on us. Jalen Waddle is there. We know him from the Snowhawks rebuild. Fantastic wide receiver um, and a pretty young superstar dev trade. So he will be improving quite a lot and uh, he will be wide receiver one in no time. We've got Cedric Wilson, 75 overall, 26 years of age uh, with a start F trade. So he will be improving. That is great. Um, is he the best wide receiver in the world? Definitely not. But he is a player that we will be able to utilize. We'll just have to see how he feels in game. We've got Preston Williams, who is a future starter at age 25, 72 overall, but a normal death trade, which is going to make it a little bit tricky. Uh, that jersey is looking quite funny with those round shoulders up there, but I think that's the new uh, new graphics options. Speed acceleration is great, spectacular catch is great, jumping is great. That's about it, I would say. Next up, Lynn Bowden Jr., future starter, uh, 70 overall, 24 years of age, with a normal dev trait, the Kentucky product. And most of these are not bad in terms of speed, um, but then you know, things get lacking pretty quickly. Trent Sherfield, 68 overall, 26 years old. Cody Core, 67 overall, 28 years old. Uh, Eric Izukama, he's 22 and 66 overall. And finally, River Krakraft, that's a name, 27 years old and 65 overall. So quite a few of those I will uh, cut quite happily, uh, then um, I think we will we will have a very solid wide receiving core to work with. At tight end, we've got another fantastic player, Mike Gesicki, with a star dev trait, also an in-game face, uh, the number seven ranked tight end, top three percentile. He is just a very solid, solid tight end. He's young enough to improve over time at 26, so we will be using him as our starting tight end, of course. I've got Durham Smythe, 27 years old, 68 overall. Adam Shaheen, 27 years old, 68 overall. So we've got a very good starting tight end. And then we've got actually not much to work with, to be honest. Um, we've got Hunter Long, who I think would be a very good uh, tight end. Number two, and then we've got John Lovett, 26, 61. And finally, Blake Ferguson, who's the star of the show, of course, with a 29 overall the LSU product and I don't think he can do anything right apart from maybe not getting injured and having passable stamina but everything else is just absolutely horrid 
I don't know what he did to the Madden ratings uh, guy, but uh, this is just, this is a punishment. Um, all right, so taking a quick look back at uh, the quarterback and the weapons, we will have to uh, develop the quarterback situation and halfback we will have to do something as well over time because this is not a not a winning halfback room uh, looking back at uh, the situation that we had at the la rams with cam Akers, who was just fantastic uh, fullback is passable that's okay at wide receiver i would say that we have two very good wide receivers one and two one of those is old and uh, maybe that will be an issue he's also very expensive and uh, yeah, he's not the strongest, so that might also be an issue. Uh, Cedric Wilson, Preston Williams, two passable backups who are solid, I would say, or decent. And then we've got Lim Bowden Jr., who is the final uh, wide receiver. And that's where I draw the line. Everybody else is just just uh, not, not starting team quality. And I think that's where the cuts are going to happen. Tight end, we've got a very good starting tight end. And then we've got not the greatest selection of backup tight ends. And this is what I wanted to say, that we have players that are sort of dragging the overalls up by quite a fair margin. But if you would take out Tyreek Hill or uh, maybe even Jalen Waddle, the overalls would be dropping drastically. Same goes for the tight end situation. So let's take a look at the offensive line. And this is where the same picture just continues. We've got Terran Armstead, who's a superstar, of course, at a 93 overall. He's fantastic. Uh, the number four ranked left tackle super happy to have him but he's 31 he will be regressing in no time we've got behind him it's austin jackson uh, he's 23 years old 67 so that's a good backup situation then right there i do like that we've got greg little 24 years old 67 and kellen dish who's 25 and 62 um, there is a new uh, um, I, I don't know how you call that feature uh, working uh, in Madden at the moment. Uh, older players are sort of, um, uh, they, they can work as a, as a mentors, uh, which means that uh, they do have an impact on younger players at the same position that we focus training upon. So that is something that uh, I, would, I would like to, to see happen here, of course, Austin Jackson going to be my uh, immediate backup here at left tackle uh, but then these two not really too crazy about those at left guard we only have one guard at a 63 overall 23 years old and uh, yeah this is this is where the rebuild needs to happen we've got strength leap block and impact blocking which are passable everything else is terrible 23 years old robert jones this is going to be bad at center we've got connor williams and michael deiter behind him and Connor Williams, I do know him from other rebuilds. Um, he is a player that I that I actually like. Um, he uh, left the Dallas Cowboys and he's now with the Dolphins. But as you can see, my starting center is a 73 overall. And while he does have quite good core attribute rankings here and there, overall, it's just too little and uh, too much work ahead of us. At right guard, we've got Robert Hunt. We do know him from uh, quite a few rebuilds. But in the end, we traded him and, and, and we let him go uh, because we just we drafted a better player. Uh, he is a very he's a solid right guard. He is uh, 26 years old. He's got a start of trade, which means he will be improving. Hopefully behind him, Solomon Kindley, nice at 25 and 68. But uh, yeah, not really that valuable. And at right tackle, we've got Liam Eichenberg as my best right tackle, Lionel Coleman. Adam Pankey, who are a 28 year old bridge player, 24 year old, 57 rated right tackle backup. So, this is the reason why the Dolphins are my franchise team. There is just so much to be rebuilt here. Um, if you take away those super highly rated players, you're left with an absolutely desolate team that needs rebuilding on the offensive side. In any case, on the defense, it's a similar. Uh, similar situation we've got Emmanuel Ogba and Zach Sealer at the left edge position Emmanuel Ogba 28 years old he is a very very solid left edge don't get me wrong but he's 28 and in Madden terms that will mean that he will be regressing at some point in time and at 83 there's not much not much space to regress to let's put it that way right edge 
Uh, we've got Christian Wilkins and Adam Butler as the backup, 69, 28 years old, 78, 26 as my starting right edge. Uh, he does have the start after eight. He will be into the 80s within the first season, so that is positive. But apart from that, yeesh, not much, not much going on here. D tackle Raquan Davis, John Jenkins, and Benito Jones. 59 overall, 24 rated, 71 overall, 33 rated, and 71, 25 rated as my starting D tackle with the start F trade. So that is a positive, but uh, there's just so much to improve here. Um, and at 71, yeah, he's 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 below decent. He's actually quite bad um, at the moment. Left outside linebacker, the Dolphins brought in Melvin Ingram, who joined on a uh, free agency contract. He left the Chargers. Um, he will be the starting left outside linebacker. Behind him, we've got Andy Van Ginkel, Brennan Scarlett, and Cameron Goody, who was drafted sadly he's got no face which is why i will be giving him a face just to be on the safe side all right there we go so now we've got cameron goody who does have a face that is fantastic he is a rookie from the 2022 draft i think he was picked in the third round or something like that uh, let's just take a quick look here at uh there we, yeah no a seventh round pick all right, Cameron Goody, seventh round pick for the Dolphins. Uh, Brandon Scarlett, 29 years old, 71 overall. Andy Van Ginkel, who's a veteran at the Dolphins. And then Melvin Ingram, who was brought in uh, on a free agency contract um, from the uh, Los Angeles Chargers, who he left. So, yeah, we've got a, a very, very aging 84 rated starter here. We've got Andy Van Ginkel, 27. Brent Scarlett, 29, and then we've got Cameron Goody, who I do want to develop over time. At mid-linebacker, we've got Jerome Baker, who is actually a very serviceable uh, mid-linebacker right there, 79 overall. Uh, he is looking quite solid. He will be improving quite quite a bit, but he's a normal death rate, so I don't know how the development, uh, development will work out. Now we've got Landon Roberts, who's a bridge player. Uh, 28 years old, 70 rated Channing Tindall. Um, he is a mid linebacker. He's also a rookie. Let me just check. I think he was the third round pick. Yeah, there we go. Third round pick Channing Tindall has a game face. That is awesome. Uh, Duke Riley is there. And finally, Calvin Munson is also there. So again, players going to be cut left and right and center because they're just absolutely useless. I intend to keep Jerome Baker and Channing Tindall. Um, Apart from that, uh, this is just not a great situation to start from. Right outside linebacker, Jalen Phillips, and he's a player that I like. He comes from the Miami College, 23 years old, start after rate 76 rated. Will be improving quite nicely, so that is fantastic. Sam Egwavuen, that is a name. He is uh, 29 years old, 70 overall, and you can just see that he is not a great player to have. Um, interestingly, he is the player attack future starter at age 29, so that is weird. Um, we've got Porter Gustin, 25 years old, and Darius Hodge, 24 years old. And looking at the overalls, this is also not really the best situation to start from. Cornerbacks, we've got star cornerback Xavier Howard, fantastic guy, 29 years old, the Baylor product, superstar, Dev Trait. Uh, yeah, he's been with the Dolphins for quite some time now. He's a fantastic corner to have, uh, similar to Jalen Ramsey at the Rams. Uncontested cornerback one. At CB2, we've got Byron Jones, who's also a very, very good uh, corner to have. Um, he has been with the Dolphins since uh, last year. He was with the Dallas Cowboys before that. Um, so CB1 and CB2 are set, but both are 29. And in terms of Madden, this means regression, and this means that something could happen here. We've got Nick Needham here, who I'm pretty happy about, to be honest. Um, I really like him. I used him in quite a few rebuilds. And uh, yeah, he's been with the Dolphins for some time now. He's a quick one, um, so I'm happy about him. We've got Noah Ikbinogene, who of course is a future starter. Without any discussion, he's got a start death trade. Pretty happy with him. We will be improving him. We've got uh, Kayon Crossen, 72, 26 years old. Trill Williams, 62, 
and 22 years old Farley Elijah Campbell, 60 overall, 27 years of age. So a cornerback room that we can cut back a little bit, of course, at free safety, Jevon Holland, one of my favorite free safeties in the league, 22 years old, star dev trade, 83 overall, and is already the number 12 ranked free safety, top seven percentile. So fantastic to have. Uh, he did pick off quite a few balls last season uh, in the in the LA Rams franchise that hurt. Of course, Sheldrick Redwine, 70 overall, 25 years of age. He's going to be my backup at the free safety position. And then we've got Verona McKinley, the third. He's a rookie um, out of Oregon. And uh, let's just take a quick look. Which round was he selected? Ah, it was a UDFA. Okay. The uh, the Dolphins drafted quite a few players uh, out of the undrafted agents pool. Um, so this is one of them. Strong safety. We've got Eric Rowe. 80 rated, 29 years old, normal death rate. Will I be using him in year one? Yes. Uh, will he be with us for a long time? I don't think so. <laughs> We've got Brandon Jones um, as the next best thing. He does have a normal death trait, 24 years old, 72 overall. Let's just hope he does improve. I've got Clayton Fayedelem, 29 years old, 70 overall, and Quincy Wilson, 26, 67. Kicker is Jason Sanders, who is a passable kicker. He does have a start of trait, which is good. He's got high kick power, which is also good. The accuracy leaves a little bit to be desired, but uh, there we go. Padres, Thomas Morstead, 36 years old, 79 overall. So for the moment, he's with us, but uh, uh, yeah, this is, this is a player that might be regressing, that might be retiring. So we do have quite a few things to take care of. We do have draft picks, which is great. We've got uh, the number 15th overall draft pick. We've got the number 29 draft pick um, that we got from San Francisco. And then we've got uh, in the second round, two third rounds, one fifth round, one seventh round draft pick. I do intend to use these uh, for the draft. I won't be going the LA Rams route because we're the Miami Dolphins and uh, they just work differently. So. Looking at the roster overall, and I stand by what I said, if you would take away all of the players that are 28 and above, the overalls would be plummeting, absolutely plummeting. And this would be a number one choice for a franchise series or a rebuild. Take away Tyree Kill, take away Tyrone Armstead, Savian Howard, Byron Jones, take away Melvin Ingram, take away Emmanuel Ogba, Eric Rowe, take away Thomas Morstead, take away Raheem Mostert and so on and so forth. And you will see that many positions are going to be uh, severely understaffed and that the overalls will be terrible. This image will be made way clearer if we take a look at the lineup here, because this will show us the cold hard truth right there. We do have Solomon Kindley here, who is actually a right guard. Um, we've got Robert Hunt, he's moving over to left guard, he's usually right guard. So uh, we are, uh, <laughs> how do you say that, we're plugging holes right there. Um, we do have uh, Liam Eikenberg there, and despite everything, you can just see that the high overalls uh, that uh, Teron Armstead has, uh, the high overall that Tariq Hill has, the high overall from Jalen Waddle is just pushing everything up so much and this is what's what's gonna hurt us i fear and um, we're gonna use raheem mustard of course we need to put our best players into the mix here uh, as, as quickly as we can uh, the defense is looking a little bit better looking at the overalls but still we've got players that will be regressing that will be getting older uh, quite quickly looking at melvin ingram um, who is moving over to left outside linebacker um, so that we can have Andy Van Ginkel here and we've got uh, Jalen Phillips who is naturally a right outside linebacker but he is playing at uh, at the backup here and Van Ginkel moved over we've got Xavier Howard we've got Byron Jones we've got Noah Igbenogany and so on and so forth so I do think this is going to be a very exciting uh, franchise mode a franchise series here um, and uh, yeah 
I think everything is set so far. Uh, slot wide receiver is going to be uh, Cedric Wilson for the moment. I don't see anybody contesting that in any shape, way or form. I will be using Sony Michel as my power halfback. I really like the, uh, the bulky guy. Um, and apart from that, everything is set so far. Uh, what I do want to do is we will take a look at uh, the free agents at a later point in time. Um, let's just take a quick look at the team salaries before we start uh, with the first, um, first simulations. There are quite a few players who are in the last year of their contract. So far, I don't see any critical players that are in the last year of their contract. Um, there's nobody that's going to hurt us if we lose them. Maybe Nick Needham, uh, but he was on a one-year deal anyways. Um, uh, maybe Sony Michel, maybe Antwin Ginkel, maybe Raheem Mostert. Um, but uh, yeah, you can see that there's a lot of work to be done here. Uh, quite a few Band-Aid players. Um, I will be working with the team as it is right now. I won't be trading instantly. Um, we will be playing along now. We will be moving through the weeks. In uh, week two of preseason, we're going to be playing against the Raiders. We lost the game against the Buccaneers last week. Um, We took Austin Jackson in the first round, thinking he could be a big piece up front for years. He's a little raw, but we were hoping you could help him out. Theron Armstead says, great minds think alike, coach. I've been wanting to work with him from the second I heard his name called during the draft. What should we focus on? I think we're going to focus on the run blocking aspect. Let's see how much we can improve his ability in pass protection. You know exactly how important keeping the quarterback clean is to the success of the offense. Definitely, I can work with him on being more stout and able to defend power moves or help him with defending finesse moves. So where can he be better? I think the pass block power is just what we need. I want him to improve at handling bull rushes and power moves. So we can't have him getting walked back into the pocket and into our quarterback's lap. Perfect. I'll get to work with him immediately and see how much I can teach him and help him improve. All right. That does sound great, doesn't it? Left tackle Austin Jackson has received plus three pass block power. Ratings tip, increasing pass block power improves a lineman's ability to defend power moves used by a pass rush. Okay. Thank you for the information. Do you have a new injury? Let's see who that is. It's a Brennan Scarlet out for three weeks with a torn labrum. Okay. We are going to go into weekly strategy here. Focus on the training aspect, though, because I just want to get to regular season. All right. Improve rookie. Discuss the progress of your first round pick. What's going to happen here now? Terran Arms said it's always fun seeing a rookie play their first few games at the pro level. He's picking things up quick, but I think he still has room to grow. I agree. Keep working with him and make sure he's ready for the regular season. We need him to be as good as he can for when the games really matter. Rookie schooling. Left tackle Turn Armstead will continue to work with left tackle Austin Jackson to help him develop and be ready for the regular season. Okay. That is good for me. We're going to be playing the Philadelphia Eagles. We lost the game against the Raiders as well last week. Can't say I'm too surprised, <laughs> to be honest. So let's get going. All right, we're at the final week of preseason and it's time to cut 21 players. That's quite a lot to do. Uh, we can also add some staff points. We do have 11 available. We will upgrade the players going into next week, which will be the first week of the regular season. We're going to improve the rookie and uh, yeah, we're going to cut those 21 players, which will be quite difficult. We're going to start by improving the rookie, of course. Austin Jackson continues to really impress me. He absorbs everything so quickly and keeps improving each day. Well, that's great. Thanks, Teron. 
Fantastic. I appreciate the time you put in. You're one of the best in the game and to be willing to pass that knowledge on to younger players is a sign of greatness. Student of the game, Austin Jackson, has received 10,000 experience points. That is great. Okay, time to cut some players. We will be going through these now here for the easy options like Lake Ferguson, for instance. No way that he will be part of my team. Uh, will result in a net minus 40 in cap space and current penalty. Yes, but what are we going to do with him? I mean, let's be honest. Adam Pankey, right tackle, 28 years old. Nope. Calvin Munson, mid-linebacker, 59 overall, 27 years, nope. Elijah Campbell, can't really see him anywhere. He's 27 years old, don't need him. Uh, Darius Hodge, let's keep him around. John Lovett, tight end. We do have so many active tight ends, I don't see him in the picture here, to be honest. Uh, Trill Williams, do want to keep him around. Garrett Dokes. Do want to keep him around. Kellen Deesh at left tackle. I uh, don't think that we need him. Cameron Goody, we want to keep him, of course. River Craft. I mean, let's be honest. What is this? <laughs> 65 overall. Duke Riley, 28 years old. Uh, resulting in 1.25 in cap space and career penalty of 1.7. Yeah, not too happy about that. What about Greg Little? He's a left tackle, 24 years old, Cody Core. Yeah, man. Sorry, man, but that is just, that's not going to cut it. Quincy Wilson, 67, at 26 years of age. Adam Shaheen, 68, Trencher Field, wide receiver. Seathan Carter, Sam Igwoven, and so on and so forth. I will now be going to the roster. Uh, we still need 30 players uh, cut. But we will do that in the rosters because I think this will give us a better overview per position. I will be putting Skylar Thompson into the practice squad. I don't think that anybody will be stealing him. And halfback, there's quite a lot of depth here. Um, let's put Salvan Ahmed and Dokes. Let's put both of them into the practice squad. And there we go. Same goes for Dokes. I do think that he might be useful in the future, but at the moment he just isn't. And I've got four halfbacks, which is more than enough. Fullback. I don't need Seathan Carter. Can I cut him? Can I release him? We're free. All right. Yeah, we're going to do that. Don't know why we need two fullbacks. Wide receiving core. Yeah, there's space for improvement. We are going to put, um, I do want to keep uh, the rookie, uh, Eric Ezukama out of Texas Tech, Trent Sherfield, 26 years old. I don't see the point in keeping him around. He will free cap space. So there we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right. Do you think we can work with that? Next up, tight end situation. Uh, Adam Shaheen. And uh, Durham Smythe, I, these two are just, <laughs> can't really look at them, to be honest. I think Adam Shaheen uh, does look to be the better choice due to the penalty. Um, savings would be two mil for Durham Smythe, but uh, Adam Shaheen has a lower penalty of only 330k. So we will be letting him go. Next up, left tackle, we've got three players here. Greg Little, Austin Jackson. I don't want to keep Austin Jackson, obviously. Um, so we will be putting Greg Little into the practice squad, which we cannot do. That sucks. All right. Left guard, Robert Jones, Connor Williams at center. Okay, okay, okay. We've got two players everywhere. I mean, Lionel Coleman. This is a player... This just pains me having a 57 rated overall player in there. I'm going to move him to the practice squad. Maybe we can uh, plug some holes here. Looking at uh, the left tackles. 
Maybe we can move Greg Little over to a right tackle. All right, there we go. We now have two right tackles similarly rated, but yeah, that works for me. Left tackle, we've got two players. That's okay. Right edge, we've got two players. That works for me, despite Adam Butler being an absolute mess at the tackle. I do think we're going to move Benito Jones or John Jenkins, who's 71. Same as Raquan Davis. What do we do with you, man? Can I release you? Yeah, that's just no use. Keeping a 33-year-old player, that's 71 overall. Left outside linebacker Melvin Ingram and even can kill Brennan Scarlett, who is injured. Carmen Goody want to keep him, of course. I would like to cut Brandon Scarlett, but I cannot do that since he's injured. But we can place him on injured reserve, which is what we're going to do. Okay. Midline backers Jerome Baker, Elandon Roberts, Channing Tyndall, and Duke Riley. Looking at that, uh, we will incur a penalty if we release Duke Riley. Same goes for Elandon Roberts. Quite a hefty one at that 2.25 mil. But I want to have Channing Tyndall in there, so I will be releasing Duke Riley. It's just no use having him. Uh, but let me just take a look at uh, his contract. All right, he's got a one-year deal. So let's see if we can't let him go after that. Uh, Sam Iguabuen, to be honest, 29 years old, 70 overall. Don't really even want to keep him around. And we do that for 50, but we will incur a penalty. All oh, those contracts are terrible. Darius Hodge, Porter Augustin. Hmm. Too crazy about this. We have so much depth here, anyways. Uh, we will. Let's think about that. Right, we're gonna keep these, of course. Trill Williams uh, out of Syracuse. Kayon Cross, and he's a player that I do want to leave. Uh, see, leave. But again, 500k. Oh, his contracts are terrible. Uh, Igben Ogane. At free safety. Can we do some? Can we move someone here? Baron McKinley the third is a rookie. I want to keep him. Sheldrake Redwine. Javon Holland. Uh, that makes sense. For strong safety. All right, Clayton Fajidalem, there we go. You are going to be cut. And I think it's going to be one mil and one mil, so there we go. No improvement there in cap space. Brandon Jones, Quincy Wilson, I actually don't see him in the picture either. We do have good strong safeties there. And a 26-year-old. Uh, let's see, how many players do I still need to cut? How many more? Three players. Okay, I think we can manage that. Let's try and do this in this view here. Darius Hodge. I do want to risk him being uh, picked from my practice squad. So we're going to move Trill Williams there. We're going to move Darius Hodge to the practice squad. And we will move... Uh, I don't want Quincy Wilson, so we will move, I think we'll move Porter Gustin because we have quite a long depth, but I can't move him to practice squad, which sucks, so it's going to be Veron McKinley, and uh, let's see, I think that should do it, yeah, there we go, all right. All right, we have trade offers for Andy Van Ginkel, which is interesting. We are getting an offer in. We're getting, we're getting Hamilton and Young. We're getting Osai and Hill and a draft pick. And Smith and a draft pick as well. That's actually interesting. I like this feature that uh, other teams offer us players as well, not only players on the uh, on the draft board, uh, on the trade board. 
but uh, not quite sure I want to accept one of these here because I'm not sure if I can take a look at the player or if they will be instantly gone. Uh, Smith at right outside linebacker, don't need him. No, we're going to hold on to Andy Winkinkel for the moment. Not saying that he will be with us forever, but we're going to upgrade the players now and then we will be ready to head into the first week. So Noah Igbenogany, I will be going for man-to-man uh, -man first off. And, uh, oops, I pressed the wrong button. Liam Eikenberg will get an upgrade towards Agile. There we go. Next up, Greg Little, Agile. Just gonna try and move everybody towards scheme fit here. Duke Riley, run stopper. The midline backer here gets quite a few upgrade points. Tyree Kill also gets an upgrade towards playmaker. Or do I go? I'm gonna go towards physical. I think he needs to improve that aspect of his game. There we go. Melvin Ingram, left outside linebacker. Gonna go for speed rusher. I mean, he's a band-aid solution, nothing more. Finesse moves, gets an upgrade. Jalen Phillips, let's get him for a, towards Power Rusher as well. I will Power Moves Pursuit. Teddy Bridgewater gets an upgrade. Improviser. And there we go. Two attack of Iloa. Thank you for that. Also gets an upgrade towards Improviser. And there we go. 76 overall. Cedric Wilson. We will be... Uh, trying to make him. Um, I do want to make him a, perf a very, very good slot wide receiver, so we're going to be improving the slot. Playmaker does look interesting as well. Robert Hunt. Let's uh, put some points into Agile, of course. And then we've got Connor Williams, our center, also Agile. I just hope he improves quickly. And finally, Austin Jackson, star decorated. First round pick, I think from last year. We'll get quite a few experience points here, pushing him into the 70s area, which is great. Pass block, run block, finesse, and strength. And finally, one additional point, 71 overall. Pass block, finesse, run block, and run block, finesse. So there we go. Let me just do a quick check. I want to see. First round pick in 2020. Okay. That's quite some time away. Uh, looking at the staff, uh, we can't move too much yet. Uh, it's a pretty similar setup. Uh, we will be starting by upgrading our coach, of course, but we do not have enough points. So uh, we could go for this. Yeah, personal talents. But uh, at the moment, I do want to improve this part here. And then, of course, the defensive coordinator is super important. Um, he is improving the cornerbacks. This is this path over here. So we're going to start boosting the defense just to be on the safe side. Uh, the head coach, of course, has uh, on this path over here. We've got the after school tutoring, which is super important uh, in getting more players ready for training. But uh, yeah, for the moment, I think that's all we can do in preseason. We will now advance one week. All right, here we are. It is week one. And uh, I will be cutting the episode here now because we have handled quite a lot. We've handled my decision to pick the Miami Dolphins. We went over the team. We got to know the team we handled preseason. And uh, the first episode in regular season will be taking care of everything looking towards uh, our game plans, uh, the the opponents, uh, the weeks, and so on and so forth. So yeah, I am super happy. I can't really wait to get, get playing and start pumping out content for you. Um, I hope you, that you will enjoy this uh, franchise mode. Please drop me a like if you do, if you did like the episode. Uh, always leave comments and suggestions. Please subscribe to the channel. That is so important and means so much to me. And as always, thank you for watching and see you next time.